three SASD schools have now reported COVID-19. Eight million dollars in tourism grants announced. Sheboygan to receive nearly a quarter million in CDBG funds. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister and welcome to Community News Review for Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. As the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health issued its first report on COVID-19 in Sheboygan County since Friday, the number of confirmed cases was increased by 54. 17 cases were added on Saturday, seven on Sunday, and 30 on Monday, with 812 test results returning negative. The three-day positive return rate is 6.2%. 28 persons recovered from their symptoms since Friday, putting the active caseload to 124, which is 26 more than on fr Friday. Of those, nine are in the hospital for treatment after spiking to 13 on Friday, the largest number institutionalized for COVID-19 at one time so far in the co county. With the new totals broken down into age categories, those in their 20s represent the largest number of the 1,282 cases recorded in the county so far at 282. 192 cases were experienced by those in their 30s, 190 in their 50s, 178 in their 40s, 151 in their teens, 138 were in their 60s, 69 cases were recorded in persons in their 70s, and 53 were 80 and older, and 28 were under the age of 10. Wisconsin added another 771 confirmed cases of COVID-19, which is, which brings its total to 89,956, with only 3,920 returns in all. The positive test return rate is 19.7%, which is down from Sunday's 20.5%, a high so far for the course of the pandemic. The seven-day running average positive rate is at 14.1%, for reference, the so-called gating criteria of that figure is 5%, a level last seen on June 29th. No deaths were registered in the last 24 hours, which leaves the death toll to the, of the state for 1,210. 18 more persons were hospitalized since yesterday, and the COVID-19 patient population currently stands at 313, with another 163 persons in the hospital awaiting their test results. 93 persons are in the ICU, and 343 require mechanical ventilation for life support. Three Sheboygan area school districts have now reported cases of COVID-19. The latest was announced on Monday in a message to families from Longfellow Elementary. The school reports that the individual was in the building for a short amount of time on Tuesday, September 8th, and followed all mitigation procedures. Work with the Sheboygan County Division of Public Health determined that there were no identified close contacts and cleaning and disinfecting of the affected rooms was completed so that there is no change in the schedule or learning module. South High parents were sent a letter last Friday relating to a nearly identical incident with no close contact and no changes as a result. North High reported the first case of COVID-19 in the Sheboygan Area School District on Tuesday, September 8th and last 
Thursday, the county DPH reported that the investigations were also underway at Parkview Elementary in Plymouth. And Bethlehem Lutheran School in Sheboygan as well as Lakeland University. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation will have a flag crew routing the traffic through the various lane closures while it inspects two bridges in Sheboygan County on Monday. So you will want to be careful if you are driving those routes. The Mullet, Dry the Mullet River Bridge of Highway 23 at Plymouth will undergo inspection this morning between 9 and 11.30 a.m. with both eastbound and westbound lanes affected at various times. Also the Onion River Bridge uh, of Highway 28 at Sheboygan Falls will undergo inspections between 1 and 2.30 this afternoon. Masters Gallery Foods of Plymouth is among three companies aimed at as finalists in the Business Retention and Expansion Award category, part of the Community and Economic Development Awards being conferred by the Wisconsin Economic Development Association. Winners in the six categories will be announced on Wednesday in virtual presentation. <clears throat> WEDA Executive Director Brian Dudna was also recently named Executive Director of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, made the announcement noting Masters Gallery strengthening of Sheboygan County's economy when it recently expanded beyond the Plymouth campus to a building second manufacturing facility in Oostburg that created over 200 jobs. The other two candidates competing with Masters Gallery are April Air of Pawnette and VES of Chippewa Falls. At least 10 persons have asked to address the Sheboygan County Board when it meets Tuesday evening, the point of ordinance, ordinance number three, which deals with enforcement of public health orders and provides legislative oversight. When the ordinance was introduced in August, it generated sharp debate among the public and prompted demonstrations outside the Sheboygan County Courthouse by those who claim that it would allow for such things as forced vaccinations and place enforcement on the hands of the Sheboygan County Health Department by bypassing the police and sheriff's department. County Administrator Adam Payne responded in a release saying that the ordinance actually softens authority already given to the county public health officer in current state statutes and introduces checks and balances with oversight by the county board. The public outcry did prompt changes in the prompted measure. The modified ordinance will be discussed among the board members and Chamber of Commerce exec Executive Director Deidre Martinez and Public Health Officer Starlene Grossman will also be speaking. The city of Sheboygan will be receiving some $230,000 in the community developmental block grant funds from the federal government as part of Wisconsin's CARES Act payment designed to soften the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic. The payment is part of the third round of funding that began in March. Sheboygan is one of 21 counties or Wisconsin communities receiving nearly $23 million in CARES Act funds. The state of Wisconsin will also receive nearly $11 million in CBD, CB, CDBG, excuse me, the funding to support local communities on the, on the front line of the pandemic. U.S. Senator Ron Johnson says the committee he chairs is nearly ready to release a report aimed at Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. 
The Wisconsin Republican said that the Homeland and the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee will be released within a week, and we are going to learn a whole lot more of Vince President Biden or Vice President Biden's unfitness for office. Republicans have claimed that Biden, as a vice president, influenced U.S. policy toward Ukraine because his son. Hunter Biden was on the board of a Ukraine energy company. Several news outlets have found that the claims to be true. Outlets have been found in these claims to be discredited. Democrats dispute that claim and are expected to release a minority report. The governor's office is hoping to restart the state's tourism industry with $8 million in funding for our local government group. The CARES Act funding is intended to help get people ready to come back to enjoy Wisconsin. Tourism Secretary Sarah Meany says spending by local groups like convention and visitors bureaus are invest is an investment in the future. The opportunity to tell the story of communities are ensuring safe and healthy travel and resident experiences as they support the local businesses themselves that we need to keep the economy rolling. The tourism industry normally supports over 200,000 jobs in Wisconsin, and the work by themselves organizations will be an important piece of stimulating local economies and helping travelers tour Wisconsin confident confidently with their travel spending and to build memories with their families, Muni said. Muni said it is vital to get the, that section of the economy back in action. And that is all we have for today. Join me again on Thursday for more local news and stories on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.